glorify your name. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we worship you. We adore you. We thank you for coming into this place, Lord God, for your presence, Lord God. Such a sweet spirit in the atmosphere. We pray right now that you would make ministry easy, Lord. You, you said your yoke was easy, your burden was light, Lord God. We just want to please you in this place this morning. That you would just remind us how you brought us through the week, Lord God. Highways and byways, tragedies all around, Lord God. But it come nigh our dwelling, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for those that are shut in, Lord God, that have the desire to be here, Lord, but cannot. Lord, we, we ask that your presence fill the room right now, that you would touch everybody. Lord, we bind every infirmity, every affliction, every disease, anything that would try to come against the power and the blood of Jesus. Let it be wiped out, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We cancel out every demonic spirit, every wickedness and plan of the enemy, things in high places, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We, we clear the atmosphere, we clear our minds and our hearts, and we prepare for you to be ushered into this place, Lord God. The scripture says, what then shall all to all these things, if God is before us, who can be successful against us? We thank you, Lord God, that even in this day and time that age and all the things that are going on, Lord, you are still in control. Can somebody say, you're in control, Lord Jesus. You're in control, Lord Jesus. And our faith is in you. We remember. We bring to remembrance, Lord God, all that you've done, Lord God, all that you've promised to do and all that you're doing right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray that we put on strength in your word, that we would guard ourselves, Lord God, and we put on all of the armor, Lord God, that we would not found, be found lacking. Lord, I thank you for the word in this season, Lord God. I'm reminded that I'm contending for my faith. I'm fighting for my faith. I am, I am in a bout, Lord God, but you've already decided the victor, Lord God. All I need to do is hold fast to the faith, Lord God. I pray that you would not let us stray to the left or to the right, Lord God. That you would keep us on the narrow path, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory. We praise your name. Yes, we worship your name, Lord God. The name above all names. The name of the King of Kings. In the Lord of Lords. Hey, Lord, we pray right now, Lord God, that you would anoint this place, that you would begin to move, Lord God, that you would blow like a mighty rushing wind, that the fire of the Holy Spirit would take place, Lord God, that all that you have set to accomplish in this place today, Lord God, would be of good success and dealt out in great measure, Lord God. Oh, we praise your name. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we want to thank you. We're ever grateful. We're ever grateful for your love and kindness, for your mercy, for your grace, your unmerited favor, Lord God. We thank you for the season that we're going into of thanksgiving, Lord God. Lord, that we would first give thanks to you. We thank you for every mother, every father, Lord God, every son, every daughter, Lord God, every household represented in this place. And Lord, we thank you for the household of faith, Lord God, that we, you love us so much that you want to be known, Lord God. Lord, that you sit omnipresent, omnipotent, Lord, that you're sovereign, Lord God, that your providence goes before us, Lord God. That which we don't understand, that which we don't know, does not take precedence over what you have ordained to happen, Lord God. We rest in your bosom, Lord God. We rest in you, Lord Jesus. And we offer up praise and worship from the, from the depths of our heart, Lord God. We cry out to you. Lord, we need you to move in our city, move in our communities, Lord God. You know the tragedies that are going on in this world, Lord. We, we pray right now, Lord God, that you would make be the intervention, that you would be the it factor, Lord. You would be the thing that changes the course of where some things are going, Lord God. Pray that, Lord God, that you would give your people a hunger, Lord God, for your word. Lord, that we would be thirsty 
for your word, Lord God, that we can't go a day without your word. Lord, that we need your presence, that we will sit at your feet and read your word, that the word makes the difference, Lord God, that you would make it plain and understandable for us, Lord, and that it would change our lives, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We need to not just know you or know about you, Lord God, but become a part of you, that you would live through us, Lord God. We invite you in, Lord Jesus, to take over this service, to take over our lives, and to be glorified in all that we do. We give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God a praise. We are in the house of the Lord on this morning. Aren't you excited to be in the building? Hallelujah. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Hallelujah. I will bless his holy name because he is truly, truly worthy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we ask that you stand at this time that we may acknowledge you if you are in the building. If you are online and this is your first time worshiping with us, please hit those likes and loves and put your name in the chat so that we can welcome you in on today. Amen. High praise. I don't see anyone standing. So just give yourselves a hand for being in the building on today. Amen. I am before you to do the announcements. So if you want to keep up with what's going on here, you can take out your phone and the announcements will be on the screen so you can take a picture of those so you will know exactly what's going on. Amen? Amen. So we want to welcome you again to High Praise Ministries, the Destiny Center, where your destiny is our journey. And if you are online, if you see those little stars on the bottom of your screen, you can go ahead and hit those stars. That is an opportunity for you to join in with us as we continue through our mortgage burning campaign. Amen. And let me tell you, God has been doing a great thing with the mortgage burning campaign. If you have not been a part, guess what? It's not too late for you to give to that uh, campaign. Amen. Amen. So hit those stars so that's your opportunity to donate for our mortgage burning campaign. And if you came in the building and you did not scan a QR code, we ask that you see an usher so that you can do that because we want to make sure that everyone that comes into the building remains safe. And our weekly announcements are as follows. We have our Wednesday virtual gathering. This is our youth Bible study and it starts at 6.30 p.m. and it goes to 7 o'clock p.m. So only 30 minutes and it's online or through a conference call. Parents, get your children on. Amen. They are going through the word and having a wonderful time doing it. Also, on Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. is our satellite ministry. If you are not a part of a satellite ministry because we have them located in different areas of the uh, cities, if you are not a part of one, please see me following our service today, and I'll make sure I get you connected to the correct one. But our satellite ministry starts at 7 o'clock. It's also virtual, so you don't have to leave home. You can jump on a conference call, or you can jump on a Zoom, and you can join in with what we are doing here at High Praise Ministries. And also, online at 8 o'clock p.m. See, we don't even take a long time when we do our satellite ministry either. So at 8 o'clock, you can jump right online and get the recap of what's going on for the lessons that we've been learning. And if you've been in satellite ministry, trust me, you know those lessons have been amazing. Amen? I can't hear nobody. I feel like the preacher in the building. Come on and help me. Come on. Amen. Also, we have, um, if you want to join in and be a part of our ministry, if you want to help out, you see our greeters and our ushers when you come in the door. If you have a beautiful smile, well, if you have a smile and you want to greet somebody when they come into the door, we ask that you join our usher board. Amen. And you can see none other than our own Sister Brenda Hill. Uh, following our service today, or you can see our sister Leslie Brown. Go ahead and wave your hand so they can see who you guys are. And if you want to join that team, they are welcoming new people. 
Also, if you want to be a part of our fine arts ministry, we ask that you send an email to finearts at hpmdc.org. You have opportunity to come and join us and be a part of our praise and worship. You can be a musician, you can be a liturgical dancer, or a part of our visual arts. Amen? And you can also join us here on tomorrow night at 5.30 p.m. If you want to sing with us and join in our worship team, we'll be right here at 5.30. Come on out. We'll welcome you. High Praise, we getting excited about what's happening in 2023. Amen. We're starting to pre prepare for our 2023 coming on Saturday, October 29th. That is this coming Saturday, October 29th. At 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock p.m., we'll be right here in the building. All department directors and coordinators, please be here. We are getting ready for 2023. We're doing our projections, our events, and lunch will be provided. Also, this is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So on next Sunday, where are my men at? Yep, yep. I want y'all to come in y'all pink on next Sunday, okay? So we all going to wear pink on next Sunday to uh, join in with our Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And then also, the men are doing things. Again, let me hear you men. Where y'all at? Yeah, we got the men in the building on today. We have our Kingdom's Men Breakfast. That's on November the 5th, 2020. It's at 10 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m., and it's going to be at 3700 Hughset Parkway, Columbia Heights, Minnesota, 55431. And they said, come as you are and change as you go. If you would like to donate or be a part of the serving team, you can give a donation of 5 to $10. And we also need help with serving. So you want to see either Deacon Larry Austin, who is, I think, up to, oh, there he is. Deacon Larry Austin or our own Brother Cortez Owens. Amen? And then we also know that we like to be a part in helping in our community. So on November 19th through November 20th, we will have our Boxes of Love giveaway. It'll be right here at High Praise Ministries at 12 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. until they're gone. and Or there'll be a 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Amen? Amen. And if you would like to have an announcement announced on Sunday, a dance cert, I'm sorry, that's the dance cert is from 6 to 8 p.m. So y'all come on out and join. Bring your people, okay? Bring your people. We want to be able to give back to our community. And then if you would like for an announcement to be announced, you have to get those in by the 15th of the month. That if you get them in, well, this month is too late. But if you want an announcement announced for December, you need to get it in by November 15th. And you can go right online to our www.hpmdc.com. Go to those three lines in the left corner, select uh, connect with us, and announcement form is there for you. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. And please, govern yourselves accordingly. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. At this time, if everyone could stand as we do some old songs. Hallelujah. Join in with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Gently rest upon my heart Like the dew in the morning Gently rest upon my heart Like the dew in the morning Gently rest upon my heart
let's just hear the voices in here. Hallelujah. Just the voices, just the voices. Just the voices, just the voices. Hallelujah. Let's make one big choir and serenade our Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We surrender it all, Jesus. Hallelujah. We surrender it all, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We surrender it all, Jesus. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Lift those hands all over this building. Give the Lord the highest praise. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you. Hallelujah. This time, let the Lord hear you. Come on, sing it out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell the Lord that he's worthy of your praise. Come on, look to him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord. God, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. God, you're so worthy. God, you're so worthy. Why is he worthy? Because he healed me. He delivered me. He kept me. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hey. Glory to God. Come on, tell them thank you, thank you. Yay. Come on, open that mouth. Tell the Lord you thank him. Reach up. Thank you. Woo. Yes. Thank you. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. If you really thank him, come on one more time, start that bless 
Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah for the last time, Lord. I, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now come on, hallelujah. Glorify his name. Bless his mighty name. Praise his name. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Of all I pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, you don't know my story. You don't know what I've walked through. You don't even know what I've been diagnosed of having. But look at somebody and say, I know that God. Oh, wait a minute. Look at somebody and say, I know that God sits on the throne of my life. And he has the last say. Come on, show he's got the last say. If you believe it, give God a shout in his house. Praise him. Praise him. young man this kind of conversation Pastor Duke it didn't mean a lot to me because I had the strength I had strength in my body mother mother Joyce Black I had the activity of my limbs Pastor Tan I could get up and run and do whatever I wanted to do but the older I get I understand that time brings about a change and I understand that there's sometimes I can't move like I want to move. Sometimes, amen, some of us get diagnoses that we don't want to have in our bodies. But look at somebody say, I know that God, I know that God sits on the throne of my life. When you see Sister Cookie praising God all by herself, look at somebody and say, you don't know her story. I believe there's 10 other people in here that's got a miracle that is waiting in the wings. That all you got to do is give God a supernatural praise right now and receive your blessing from the Lord. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Glory to 
take high. I believe what God says. I believe what his report says. Glory to God. And his report says, I am healed. Hallelujah. I feel miracles in the atmosphere. Oh, I feel miracles, Mama Ray. Look at somebody say, miracles is in the atmosphere. Reach up and get it. Reach up and get it. Woo! Reach up and get it. Come on, let the miracles, let the power of God, let it ring out. Glory to God. I receive it. 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 For your glory. For your glory. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. God gave us, God gave us a, year, a word some years ago. God gave us a word some years ago that said that there would not be any more travailing. Look at somebody and say, we the church don't have to travail. We don't have to, we don't have to lament. We don't have to cry and we don't have to stress over the things that we need God to change. Because the word of the Lord says with a twirl and with a dance, the miracle shall spring forward. So everybody in the house, if you believe that God is able to perfect the thing that's concerning, that's, that's the issue in your life that's bothering you, if you believe that he is able to perfect that thing today with the twirl and with the dance, I want you to go high five three people and say God's doing it right now. God's doing it right now. God's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you know that there's no way you can live without God, come on, look at somebody and shout, there's no way, I'm going to try to do it without him. He is the only way. He's the only source. He's my help, my very present help in the time of trouble. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, there's no way. Glory, glory, glory. I don't know about you, but I feel like church this morning. church like this marks the difference it marks the difference from everybody who goes to church out of tradition out of habit out of customs brother black we're here because God is good look at somebody and say I'm here to be a witness of the power of God that's at work in my life now, if the power of God is, is, is alive and at work in you, throw both hands up and shout, it's alive! It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. Glory to God. Hallelujah. telling you there's some things we got to do but I feel like going right into my preach look at somebody and say the power of God is here now come on look at somebody and say it's here right now matter of fact I'm oozing with the oil of the Holy Ghost I'm oozing with the power of the Holy Ghost it's all over me somebody say can't you feel it Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Rababa Korasha. He can Kosha. The Holy Ghost told me that this would be a day of miracles, the supernatural. Glory to God, and I believe it's hoovering over this house now. Some of you have already received it, but there's a few of you are still trying to break through. I'm going to give you 45 more seconds. Come on, break through and get your miracle. Hallelujah. Every miracle is not, it's not about a physical healing. Some miracles are about the mind. Some miracles are about relationships. Some miracles are about finances and business and jobs and properties. I don't know what you need right now, but God is here to release it into your spirit. All you got to do is open up your mind. You don't even have to respond with your body right now. Just open up your mind and receive the miracle of the Lord. And when you receive it, your body will respond to what God has just done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless your name, Jesus. We're going to move on so I can get back up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's a song that used to, go, used to go like this. Holy Ghost here right now. See that? There was only about two people that responded because that's old school. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna test one more time to see how many old school folks we got in the house. Holy Ghost here right now. Holy Ghost here right now. Holy Ghost is here right now. For the Holy Ghost. the Holy Ghost jump up and shout he's in the house and sit back down oh. yeah. Holy Ghost is here everyone that's in the household today. God bless Pastor Wes Belfry and Mother Mother Belfry on this morning and to all the saints of God that's in the house. Look at somebody and say you're at the right place at the right time. It is good to see all of you that are here. It's good to see family with us on this morning again. Amen. Mother Joyce Black. I'm calling her mother because she's a seasoned woman of Zion. Amen. And she's um, from a lineage of powerful men and women of God. And so it's an honor to have her in our house. Come on, let's hear it for Mother Joyce Black. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And and then we have we have Jesse Black looking at who he talking about. So we have we have Jesse and Mary Black. They they church family. God bless. They say that ain't us. So we got three blacks in the house today. Praise God. Amen. Also we're happy to see um Amen. A long time standing member. And I just love when he comes, amen, shows his face. He can't always be here, but it's good to see Brother Twin. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Good to see him in the house. Glory to God. Elder Hewitt and Keisha in the back. God bless y'all. We see you back there. Amen. Thank God for all the saints. Amen. You're at the right place at the right time. We have today, we have a very special um, city official that is with us. And I'm going to um, give it over to him in just a moment. Um, he happens to be the son of um, Brother Peter Hayden, um, who I've known for many, many years. And, um, and his wife, Joyce, and uh, the family, they have, they, go, they have much history with my family. I didn't know him as well, amen, but uh, we knew his dad and, his, um, and Joyce very well. But we're, he's here, he is a city official, and we thank God for him. This is time and a season where we all have to go to the polls. Look at somebody say, we all have to go to the polls. Everybody got a vote. Now, let me tell y'all something. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing these, um, hearing these evangelical pastors, they're out there, and they're pushing their thing, and they're, they're saying, if you vote Democratic, you're going to hell. Amen. They try to put fear, use the word of God to place fear in you to vote Democrat. But look at somebody say, God, say, say, say heaven's not about a, a, a political party. Heaven ain't about a political party. Amen. I can vote what I need to vote to help my people. Amen. I, I'm going to vote how I need to vote. Amen. To bless those and to help my community. Amen. And they use scare tactics and use scripture and things to try to intimidate you um, to vote. Um, but don't be swayed by that. Amen. We are, we are voting. I'm hearing them talking about the economy. Yes, we know it's bad, but it's been bad ever since I've been born. And I'm 62 years old. And I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't lived a, a year when, I, when I've when i heard a president not talk about or someone talking about recession or depression or things, amen. So we have, we understand that, that these things will always be with us, but there is a different source that I'm gonna tap into, amen, when we preach. Look at somebody and say, my source is not from this earth. 
But I do believe, I do believe that this, this election, this election, amen, we know that violence is, is in a rampant. We see crime. We see gun violence, and it's horrible, amen, and we don't take it lightly because we have security every Sunday. God bless Brother Luke that's back in, in the doorway. God bless you, Brother Luke, amen. Um, but we see, so we have security here at the church to make sure that you feel safe when you come. Amen. That there's no surprises here in, in the house. But um, we understand that even with all those things, that God is in control. And there is a responsibility for the church to get back on our knees. The Bible says, if my, not my politicians, not Republicans or Democrats, but if my people would do one thing, humble themselves and pray. And then, most of us don't like to turn. We like to do this, 360. But look at somebody say, there has to, this is a season of the 180. Oh, y'all ain't saying that with me. Come on, somebody shout, this is the season of the 180. That's the 180. This is the 360. Look at somebody and say, but God is going to do something when the people of God begin to pray. How do you know, Apostle Hill? Because I believe that there's an end time revival that's about to shake this earth. My Bible tells me in Elijah, as the world gets darker, the church light will become brighter. Look at somebody and say, I'm becoming brighter. Mother Presley, I'm sticking out my chest. I'm getting in position to fight and battle the devil. Look at somebody and say, I'm getting ready to claim my community back, to claim our society's back. Someone say, it can happen, but we've got to do what we've got to do. And so, amen, we're going to vote that which protects our democracy. Look at somebody and say, we're voting this year to keep freedom in America. Amen. So Mr. Hayden is coming now and he's going to share. Let's say amen as he comes. Good world. Amen, church. It is so good to see you today. Uh, as the pastor said, my name is Jeff Hayden. Uh, I am the son of Peter Hayden and, and Joyce Hayden. And many of you uh, may know them. And I can tell you that this church has been uh, really We've been grateful for this congregation and our family through the trials and tribulations that we uh, have gone through over the years. And so I just want to say thank you. I know that this is your work of worship service, and it's the time in which you praise the Lord. And so thank you for allowing me just to get a little bit of your time just to make sure uh, that when we leave here today and we go throughout the week, there's a civic duty that we have to be able uh, to do, and that is... Uh, to make sure that we're paying, first of all, paying attention, and second of all, November 8th, we're going to vote. I would be remiss to say, well, thank you. I'd be remiss to say I want to send you greetings for your state senator and a good friend of yours. You know him, Senator Bobby Joe Champion. Anybody know Bobby Joe? Well, Bobby Joe sent me here just to uh, say hey and to make sure you know. Uh, just if you don't remember, I served 12 years in the Minnesota legislature nine in the Minnesota Senate and three in, in, in the House with Bobby Joe. And so I know just a little bit about what's going on uh, here today. And as the pastor said, um, we won't use this time or, or get in any trouble uh, to tell you who to vote for. But uh, as I came in today and they gave me the card and it said uh, that you needed to, to do, use your QR code to make sure you check in, uh, I would suggest that you use that same phone uh, to take a look at who you should vote for, right? And, and, the, and, and when you do that, it's clear uh, of who you should vote for and how you should vote. But take out just a little bit of time to learn uh, who you are, listen to the people in which you trust uh, to talk about it. But the big issue is to vote. They, we know who votes. I'm gonna say it one more time, we know who votes. We often know who you vote for, but we know who votes. So I don't think it is coincidental, Pastor, uh, that certain parts of town have more than other parts of town, right? 
certain parts of town uh, have less violence than other parts of town. So I think that that's because they know, and I know for a fact that they know who votes. So I want y'all family to be strong uh, in your voting, and not only everybody here voting, but I want you to talk to your family members who maybe didn't show up today, or maybe the folks that are here that are watching us online to vote. I'll make, this, I'll make two points, and then I'm going to sit down and let you guys get back to this wonderful service. First of all, there's a misnomer that says that if you have gone uh, and made a mistake and have gone to jail or in prison or any of those kind of things that you can't vote. So there is something that says that if you are on probation or parole, you can't vote. But once you've been released from that, and that's something that Senator Champion has been working on for a long time, but once you're released from that, that you can. And I know that I go to a lot of doors and people think that the, they made a mistake along the way and that, and that they can't vote or they've come from another state in which the laws are different. You can vote. Here's the last point that I'll make to you. Um, so there's a lot of things in the news about uh, a choice. Um, and, and I won't go into that because you may feel one way or another uh, about that, especially people of faith. But here's what we know, that the battle for women to choose what they needed to do about their body is, extremely, is, is, is directly linked to the battle that we've had for human and civil rights. So the choice to be able to do that, the choice also says that if they take that away, Pastor, if that goes, then what's the next thing that's going to go? So here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to look up and have to be picking cotton for free anymore. Because that was something that we had to do and we had to fight for as well. So all the things that you see, all of the freedoms that you have, there's a group of folks that want to erode that. And when they start that, they call that a slippery slope. And when they start that, we may not be able to have the choices that we have. I just want to say thank you to all of you. I love the service. I'm glad that I was able to participate. I have a couple of more stops, so when you see me go out the door, it's not because I didn't enjoy your service and I plan to be back, but I am grateful, grateful for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. Give him a great big God bless you. Somebody say, I'm going to vote. We're going to vote. Amen. And we're voting for democracy, freedom. Amen. To remain as we are in America in, in freedom. Um, quickly, thank God um, for all of you that participated in, because of the lateness of the hour, um, several of you, I'll do this next week, but several of you um, made your, uh, completed your $1,000 pledges last week and we are so excited for you let's give God a hand for all those individuals and so um, so we're grateful for all of you that did it some some have given seven thousand some have given six thousand amen some have given five and four thousand amen and we're just excited about what God has done through the Saints of this house amen as of last week we needed 35 um, go ahead and put that total up there. We can tell you what we have um, raised thus far. Glory to God. Our new total is $200,021. Okay, y'all read it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. $221,628.92. Amen. Come on, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. So we have two running totals that are going on at the moment, amen, in terms of where we are. And so um, uh, last week we needed um, um, 35,000. Um, as of now, all we need is $26,500. Come on, somebody say, we're picking, we're, 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 we're picking away at this. It's going to happen. Come on, someone shout, it's going to happen. 
Those of you watching today, amen, you can still get in your contribution to help us do what we're going to do because I'm determined that we are going to further the kingdom of God in our community. God wants us to be debt-free, and I believe that we're going to be a debt-free church. Amen. Where we go forth, forward now, we're going to have grants, and we're going to have other monies taking care of those ministries. Praise the Lord. Amen. So look at somebody and say, help us out. We're almost there. Come on, Anastasia. Pastor Anastasia have something, amen, that she wants to share that we're going to do with our, with our mortgage burning. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord for his presence. Hallelujah. Aren't we excited? We are finally down to 26,500. 26, Woo! God is good. And so to just help us finally get to the finish line, we are doing a final fundraiser. And so we are going to sell merchandise. And so the merchandise includes accessories, clothing, phone accessories, caps, jackets, all the things. The promo video will air on tomorrow. <laughs> it's just 45 seconds, and so you can pre-order your merchandise. And so this means the first 25 purchases, how many? 25. Yes, will be matched by the matching organization. So purchase your merchandise. I, we don't have the video to showcase today, but we will next week. So say, who's gonna grab their merchandise? This week, this week, this week. And it's, let love shape your life. And so all the merchandise will have our year's theme on it. And so let's participate. Let's get this done by November 1st. Can we do it? Let's do it, hallelujah. Amen. We're praying for Mother Stewart, the Stewart family that is out of town. Amen. On this week, I'm going to see about a family member. Um, right now, uh, come on, offering. It's offering time. Pastor EJ, come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What time is it, high praise? What time is it? I'm going to tell you, um, and I'm going to talk to my, my parents over here, and I'm going to talk to you all as a congregation. I won't be up long, but it is a little bit of a sermonette. I just want to tell you something. Your giving is directly tied to your faith. It's, it's directly tied to your faith. I've been in ministry for an amount of years, and um, I, I'm 43 now. And I, I'm, a, I'm telling on myself, and this is, I'm hoping this helps somebody. I've never been a consistent tithe payer. Not consistent. Not consistent. So the Lord's been working with me on my faith. And he said, how do you really feel about me? How do you, he, he challenged me. He said, how do you really feel about me? You'll go work in ministry. This isn't a reflection on my household. There's others in my household that do pay their, pay, uh, their tithes uh, faithfully. But it's always been a struggle for me. And he asked me, how do I really feel about him? And if God is really your source and your job and money and funds is just a resource, then it should reflect in putting first things first. It takes true understanding of your faith in God to give your money because it's one of the things that's hardest for us to release. But the blessing that comes back to you is immeasurable. Let me tell you how I put this to the test. So I paid my tithes recently, and I'm, I've continued, I've started to pay my tithes more consistently. And I was in a position, I'm in a lot of different ventures. I have this business, that business, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But every time I would get through my two-week cycle, you know, from my, my main job, I would be close to broke. So I paid my tithes, and when I tell you I had surplus, it was my biggest billing week. I had so much coming out of my account. All the automatic stuff. Y'all know how that is. Y'all got automatic stuff. You go to your account, and all of a sudden, it's a lot less than you thought it was. And I had all those things coming out. And somehow, I had surplus. When I tell you over this period of time of faith, I have not lacked. Everything's getting paid. I'm able to do 
more than I was able to do when I was trying to use the money I was holding on to to take care of business. And this is the scripture that God gave me. He said, if you really love me, you'll, you'll see this and you'll make, you'll respond to the word of God. How many of y'all know that you have to respond to the word of God? You have to respond to it. You can't just know it. You have to make it applicable and you have to apply it to your life. You have to do what it says do. You can't just say you know what to do and then don't do it. He took me to um, the Psalm of David, Psalms 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed and guide and shield me. I shall not lack. How many of y'all worried about what you're lacking? Don't let that be what stops you from giving your tithes. He says, he makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me inside the still and restful waters. How many of y'all need rest? If you're tired, don't let that be the reason you don't give your tithe. He refreshes, restores my life, myself. He leads me in the path of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him. Not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. If you need to be refreshed and restored, it's in your obedience if he really is who you say he is to you. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. For you are with me, your rod to protect me, your staff to guide me, they comfort me. If you're afraid, don't let fear stop you from giving you first things first. Put first things first and that fear will dissipate and he'll lead you through that scary place. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my en enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My brimming cup runs run over. Some of us in some situations and the situation is keeping you from being obedient to God in his word and putting first things first. He says, even in the midst of that circumstance, if you put him first, he'll take care of you. Because surely, only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. He says, if you really believe I am who you say I am, know that I'll take care of you. If you'll stand on your feet, well, let's get ready for our financial confession. We are prosperous people. We are debt-free people. We are 100% tithers. We are cheerful givers. The windows of heaven have been opened, and the doors of failure have been closed. Our needs are supplied. We live in the realm of great expectation. We are blessed and cannot be cursed. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you for this fertile ground. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise. We thank you that you are over all things. You are omnipresent. You are omnipotent. Uh, omnipotent. You are omniscient, Lord God. You are sovereign. And we praise you and we glorify you that you let us know how to make things work your way. Lord, we pray right now that whatever fear, whatever thing is holding people back, Lord, from giving, that you will remove it and that you will give them the assurance of who you are in their life according to your word. We give you all the glory, honor, power, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be sure if you're online, you can give online. You can give, uh, you can also mail it into the church. You can text give. And those of you that need, the kiosk in the back is open. Thank you for your time and attention. God bless.
God bless you. Let's go straight to the word. Amen. I've already given the hype of my sermon. You probably kind of know where past Apostle is today. Amen. And so we're going to just go straight to the word. I want to refresh. We've been doing a series on the, the book of Jude. And um, we know that we have um, intervals where we have other people coming to share and um, so sometimes we um, may lose track. So let's just, just for, to bring us up to speed, let's go to Jude and let's just read the first um, few verses so that we know where we are and where we're, where we're going and what we're going to be sharing on today. Father God, bow those heads. God, we thank you today. We thank you for all that you are. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your power that's at work in our lives, in our hearts. God, today, Lord, you place Mother Carolyn Kennedy on my spirit, my heart. So, God, I just pray that you will go to where she is, that even on this week, that we will make love touches to her, that we can, that she will know that she's still loved by her church family. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for that which you have begun in her, you will complete. We thank you for it, Lord, because we know that you are able to do exceedingly beyond and above everything that we can imagine or think. And so, God, we thank you, God, for the work that is at, the word that is at work in her life. God, we know that the prognosis said that she should already be gone. But God, we thank you, Lord, for life that sustained her for the prayers of the saints that's alive in her spirit. Hallelujah. So that she can still celebrate and live life with her children and grandchildren and great-grands. God, we give you praise and we give you glory for her. And now, Lord Jesus, as we go into what you've given me to share today, we bind all criticizing, fault-finding spirits. Allow the word to go forth with free course and that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, thank God. Amen. Amen. Jude. Let's begin reading. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave, when I gave all the diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needed for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly, that you should, I think I got about maybe uh, three quarters of the church, or maybe that was a fourth. Let's try it again. And exhort you that ye should, earnestly. there you go, do what? Yes, yes. which? How many times delivered? Twice delivered. Three times delivered. Once delivered, the truth was once delivered. Everyone say the truth was once delivered to the church, to the saints. Come on, let's go. For there are certain men crept in unaware. They came in through the back door. They came into the side door. They came in other ways who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. In other words, that God knew that they would be there um, from the beginning. And he knew that they would already be condemned. Look at somebody and say, everybody, everybody. ain't going to heaven. Let's try that one more time and then look around, look around, because somebody you sitting next to may be one of those people that have crept in unaware. Uh, look at somebody and say, everybody, everybody ain't going to heaven. Everyone that is determined to go to heaven, and in my spirit, I just feel that in my spirit right there, everybody that is determined to make heaven your home eternally, I want you to throw back both hands up and say, I'm determined to make it. Make it. 
That's a message that is not necessarily preached a lot, and people don't like to hear that. Because um, we like to think that while everyone has a chance, everyone um, and, and, the, and grace has been extended to everybody, everybody, everybody can't see it. You need a special lens. Someone say you need special lenses to see what I, to, 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 to see what I already know. Amen. To see what I know because the Holy Spirit reveals to those that know. The, the, the ungodly can't see it. They can't understand it. And they will ridicule you for being in place. Amen. But look at somebody and say, I'm determined to make heaven my home. So ungodly man, come on, let's go. Turning the grace of our Lord into what? Lasciviousness. In the, the, uh, the King James said lewdness. In other words, that they turn grace, the, the gospel message, into something that, that, that is not what it really is meant to say or be. They were saying that you can live in kind of way, you can anything you want to do, and you're still, um, you're still going to be okay because once you're saved, you're just saved. Come on, somebody say, once you save, oh, you just save. See, see, see and, and so there's, there's in life a controversial um, conversation because so many people get stuck with that. God does place you in the hands of Jesus. And so everybody who wants to be kept, can't no devil in hell pull you out. is me in the hands, in the palm of Jesus. And so it doesn't matter how hard the attack may be. If I'm in the hand of Jesus, the devil can't pull me out. But when I decide to do my thing, look at somebody and say, then I can fall away. I can fall away and I can turn away. And so, uh, let's keep going, so, so, and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep going. I will therefore put you into remembrance. We're not going to go back there again, but look at somebody and say, sometimes you just got to remember. Woo, come on, high five somebody, wake them up and say, you got to remember. I know y'all scared because it's, it's late and I'm just getting up, but I'm going to be up here all day. Don't worry about that. Let, let, let the Holy Ghost do it. <laughs> High five somebody else and say, you got to remember, baby. <laughs> though ye once knew this, though you once knew it, look at somebody and say, one time you understood this. One time you knew it. You had an understanding how the Lord that saved his people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believe not. What is he saying there? He said these people, they once knew God. You knew what God had done. That these people, the church of God, they had, God had brought them out of sin, which, uh, which, which, which represents Egypt. God had brought them out of Egypt, out of sin, but they forgot who they were. And because they forgot who they were, what happened? God did what? Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all quiet. Wait a minute. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I used to tell y'all, I ain't told this church, this is the new church, Pastor Pan. Most of y'all ain't been here a long time, but the old saints, y'all help me preach, I'll get done. Y'all go to sleep. I'm going to keep talking. Some of y'all might need a nap. Praise the Lord. All right. So the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them. So, um, so they, they were destroyed because what? Wait a minute. Y'all saying it right, but come on. Let's make the devil nervous. They were destroyed because... 
Because they did not believe or they believe not. Amen. We understand what the word is saying, but it's all the same thing. Come on, let's go to the next. Not only did the children of Israel, let's talk about the angels that were created just a little higher than man. That also these beings that are not male nor female, but they're just beings, which kept not their first estate. They perverted what God had established them for. And they left their own habitation. And they came down here and created giants on earth according to Genesis 6. They had sex with the daughters of man. And created giants in the earth. And he has reserved because of their disobedience. And so the word of God, so what happens here is Jude give us an insight to things that are not necessarily, you can't cross-reference it in the scripture. In other words, he's doing it from, he's getting this information from tradition and from um, other places that he knew that the, 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 the old Israelites and, and the, the church of the Hebrew people, they understood they understood this, this information because it was all um, recorded and it was listed there. So he went to where they got their information from and let them know this. He says, he says they left their own habitation and they came down here, had relations with uh, the, the daughters of man and created giants on the earth. Now, I need you to understand this. From the time of but from the time of, of, of Adam to Noah, um, the time of Adam to Noah, there was about 1,026 years. Don't, don't crucify me. Those, those numbers are a little off, but it's, it's about that. About 1,026 years. Um, Adam died. He was like 930 years old. And so he died 90 years prior to the birth of, of Noah. 90 years... Um, prior to the birth of, of, of Noah, who was his great, 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 great grandson. And so there were, I believe, six to seven generations from Adam to Noah. And so Noah, uh, so, so Adam told his son, who was Seth, who was still alive when Noah was born, who was probably six generations removed, who was now 800 something years old, gave him an accurate account of everything that had happened in the past nearly 1,000 years. In this dispensation, the Bible says a third of heaven fell with Lucifer, the stars. A third of the heaven fell hell because of rebellion because these angels wanted to leave their first estate and they had look at somebody say they had to go someplace they landed look at somebody say they landed at your address now there's, there's a whole lot of controversy with this particular piece here. And some say that demons now are disembodied angels. Because what happened, there had to be a restart. Because of those, uh, um, Adam had, I believe Adam had 77 sons and 32 daughters. Well, he lived 900 years. All of them, all of his sons had multiple, multiple children. So at this time, because, you know, we get caught off into who was who and, and how did Cain go to a city and how did Cain meet a wife. Let's look at somebody and say, we ain't got to know all that. It's fun to get it. But understand this. So, so there were about, there was about 10 billion people. There were about 10 billion, according to um, 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 research and, and, and the experts, I'll put it like that. According to the experts, they say there were about 10 billion people at the time of Noah's life. How many billion people do we have living now? 
about six, six, eight. Hear this. With that, the, the Bible says that the world had become so corrupt. The Bible says as it was in the days of Noah. What was going on in those days? They were marrying, giving in marriage. They were just having a whole, there was a whole lot of lewdness going on. A whole lot of doing whatever I feel like doing going on. Look at somebody and say, there's nothing new under the sun. There was a whole lot of lewdness happening and taking place. If I felt like doing it, I did it. In other words, there were animal instincts. Those men that crept in the church had animal instincts. They did what the flesh detected or, 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 or told them to do, dictated to them. If the flesh said do it, the flesh did it. If the flesh says I want it, they would go get it. There were no boundaries. There was no standards. Whatever they wanted to do, they did it. And look at somebody and say, that foolishness is in the world today. It's in the church today. People don't live by standards and boundaries. I want to go over here, so let me go over here. I want to go over there, so let me go over there. Let, let me eat this. Let me eat that. Let me watch that. Let me watch this. We do anything we want to do. There's no standards and boundaries because there's no spiritual guidance of the Holy Spirit alive, active, working inside of the church. Someone say, when you got the Holy Ghost, you just don't do whatever you want to do. You may not understand some things, but you hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, and you obey what the Spirit says. I'm preaching real good. Let me just hit this. I'm going to just hit it for 30 seconds and be done. But people are everywhere. Listen, when I grew up, we were planted in, a, in one church. I thank God for the Hearst experience. They submit their assignments to me. Pastor Luster, when she has to go speak, she submits her assignments to me. Why? Because that's order. I don't have to wonder and hear that she was somewhere preaching and I, I not know about it. I don't have to wonder where people are when they're doing ministry and I not know about it. I can't cover that if I don't know it. But you go do the assignment and you come back to your home. Now we got people trying to build 5, 10, 25 churches. Don't know where they're a member. Eating from everybody's table. Look at somebody and say, that's lewdness, y'all. You're not having boundaries. Somebody say, God is the God of boundaries. God is the God of order. I said that to make it re relevant. Because sometimes we think that people, we talk about stuff and people say, well, I ain't, I ain't caught up in that. Well, some of us are caught up in a whole lot of stuff. And we think that we're okay in it, but, but God, God, God is not smiling on that. Someone said, there has to be standards, y'all. No, so, come on, let's do a Pastor Lester. There has to be standards, y'all. I love when she do that, y'all. There has to be standards. There has to be boundaries. Otherwise, you just every place. You are shipped without a... There's no direction. Okay, let me keep going. So, we, we, have, these, we have these people, these angels, 
that, that, that are now, they, they've left their first estate and they're here, they've been disembodied. So, so, so the, the world had to be restarted. There had to be, everyone shout restart. restart. I, I'm hearing now prophets saying there's another restart that's about to take place. Because, because humanity is so evil. We, 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 we have our, 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 our ears to what the spirit of God is saying has become so dim. So God poured water. The Bible says the water didn't just fall from heaven. The Bible says it came from the cisterns. It came from beneath the world, earth. Water just came up, just began to rise. The water came from heaven and it came from below. And it covered every mountaintop until every, every angel was dead. Every evil man was dead. That's what, that's when, so when Jude wrote this, he knew his audience. He knew that they understood this. When he said that the angels who kept not their first estate, he knew, he knew that the people that were his listening audience understood that these were angels that got caught up into craziness and left, um, they followed Lucifer out of heaven and fell to earth. And the Bible says they're reserved in everlasting chains. Go to the next one. Under what? In other words, so uh, here, here you see the controversy because those who said that they came down to have relations with women and created the giants, um, um, and that's found also in Genesis, the Nephilims, um, the, it was a nation of people that were just big, they were giants, and those were the people that, um, that when uh, Moses years later go over to see um, um, the land of spy and the, the land of Canaan, that the giants were in the land still. Some of them had were still around, and so there's a whole lot of, um, according to uh, um, to theologians, controversy with that whole piece. There is a whole lot that support that idea, but 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 this is what we understand: they all aren't locked in chains because we know the devil is loose, and he led the pack from heaven, and so he's loose roaming around. The Bible says he's he is loose roaming. Like he's like a roaring what, doing what, seeking to do what. He's trying, he's seeking to get you. Look at somebody and say, the devil is loose trying to get you. So, let's go. Even as Sodom and what? And the what? So it wasn't just Sodom and Gomorrah. It was, it was also the cities around them. And if you understand, again, history, these cities were, they, they were built on tar pits. They were very, um, the, the, uh, these cities were built on very flammable material. And so that when fire fell from heaven, they, it exploded like a nuclear weapon. <laughs> and so the Bible says, uh, again, in New, the New Testament, during the time of Jesus, that 2,000 years prior to Jesus coming, 2,000 years later, we see, they still saw the flames and the smoke of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because why? It was forever. It was eternal. It was going to be an eternal thing. And so, so Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manners giving themselves, come on, over to what? Fornication. Giving themselves over with fornication. Let's just stop there just for a moment. Because we, 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 we understand the Sodom and Gomorrah thing about homosexuality. But we also understand there was a whole lot of other heterosexual sex going on too. People that weren't married to their partners. It was, it was, these were towns about sex. You can't turn, listen, I'm, I've been enjoying these lessons, Jamia, amen, listening to the old saints of my, of my satellite group. Amen, I just sit and listen and watch them. I hear them talking about the things that, that are happening now that weren't happening back then. And see, back, back in the day, someone mentioned this. Back in the day, um, our girls, we raised our girls to be virgins until they got 
Now, we don't condemn, there's, there's a whole lot of peer pressure in our society today. We live in a postmodern society. We live in a post-truth society. We live in a society that says that everything goes. Anything goes, and my truth is my truth, and my truth is just as valid as your truth. You can't tell me what to do because my truth is just as important as your truth. And you may think this and feel this way, but guess what? Um, that's old foggy stuff. That, that's 1970s. That's 1980s. No, that's, that's prevalent even today. That truth, listen, the truth of Jesus Christ is absolute, and his standard will never abort. His standard will never change. His standard will always be righteous. Postmodern ideas says that I can do whatever I want to do, that the Buddhist is just as important and just as righteous as my Christianity, Judaism and um, Is Islamic and whatever it might be. It's all relevant and, and because it's all relevant to the situation. So if that's what they believe and that they're going to their heaven, well, then they're going to their heaven. It's their truth. No, my Bible says, Jew said it very clearly. He says that it was once delivered to the... The truth was once delivered to the saints. There aren't multiple truths. There aren't multiple heavens. There aren't multiple gods. There is only one God. Somebody shout, there's only one God. And we understand this, that, that the Bible tells us that fornication is wrong. We'll turn, the, we'll turn the heat and the fire off of what we do to turn it onto another perversion. But someone said all unrighteousness. Someone shall sin is sin. And if you're sleeping with somebody that you're not married to, it's called fornication. And it's unrighteous. Sodom and Gomorrah were burned for it, for fornication. And then they went after strange flesh. Who was the strange flesh that they went after? Well, what happened back, if you go back to and read this particular piece in Genesis again, um, that, that God says, I'm going to destroy these cities. And Abraham said, well, are you going to kill everybody? He sent two angels. God sent two angels to have a conversation with Abraham. And he said that, will you save it for 20, 10 one. And so, um, so, so the, angels, the angels made an agreement with Abraham, but they went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and, and the Bible says that Lot, who was living there, his nephew, because Abraham was concerned for his, his nephew Lot, who was living in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so what, what, what happened was um, Lot knew the condition of the people. He knew, he knew the, the, the mindset of the people. He knew that they were all animalistic. They had animal instincts. They saw flesh. They saw pretty. They saw cute. And what they do, they just went for it. Look at somebody and say, that spirit of, of, that spirit of whoredom is still in the earth. People don't care nothing about anything. All they think about is gratifying their flesh. Sometimes I, I wonder, how can you possibly, I look at some people and how they connect, and you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but sometimes people just take advantage, they use people for to satisfy their own needs. We know that because also in this, we're talking about having sex with animals. That's what was going on too. Come on, someone say strange flesh. These people were getting, these men and women were getting it on with whatever they saw moving, whatever they felt like in the moment, they did it. So it was same sex, it was homosexuality, it was animals, dogs, cows, uh, lambs, and also in this case it was the angels. They went after the angels. They went after the righteous men. And, and what happened? God was angry. God was angry because of their, um, their non-disciplined, fleshly behavior. And the Bible says that he burned them. Suffering the vengeance of what? Come on, let's try it again. So, so hear this. They suffered the what? 
we're going to do it one more time. We're going to do it one more time because I want everybody to hear this. Everybody that practice homosexuality, bestiality, any sexual perversions, fornications, anybody that practice any of these things, they suffer the what? Vengeance. Come on, they suffer the what? Vengeance. There you go. Let's make the devil mad one more time. They suffer the? Vengeance. Of what? There ain't no going to heaven doing it any way you want to do it. There's only one way that God established for sexual activity. And that's with a man and a woman after you've been married. And the Bible says then is undefiled. So hear this, saints. This perversion God, the Holy Spirit had you right. I want y'all to hear this. This is my point, and I'm just about done. Fornication, sexual sins, perversion, perversion Sodom and Gomorrah. We, we hear that, everyone goes, ooh. Because we know what that means. But in this three, this, in this triad of things that were unnatural, that God did not like, he said, first, I'm going to go up Sodom and Gomorrah, homosexuality, fornication, um, bestiality, and all the rest. Por uh, wh when you have sex with babies, what is that? Pedoph pedophilia. All of it. All of it. That's an abomination worthy of eternal fire. Leaving your first estate holy beings coming to earth, not being lifted up in pride, going against what God um, established you for. He established you to reign in heaven and to be a messenger between heaven and earth. But now you're damned to, to uh, eternal darkness because of your disobedience. In that triad, hear this, in that triad of things that were unnatural, that were perverted, that were not what God intended or wanted, that's a disaster for anyone's life, he also included unbelief of the church. The first thing that he stated was the unbelief of the church, and because of their unbelief, God said he destroyed them. So look at somebody and say, any time you try to justify your unbelief, you're only setting yourself up to be destroyed. I need y'all to hear the weight of that. Sodom and Gomorrah, fallen angels, well, church people that don't believe God, God places you in the same triad in Scripture as the rest of them. Someone shout, it's unnatural. Look at somebody and point to them and say, it's unnatural for you not to believe the word of God. Not to operate in faith. Not to operate in knowing what God said that he would do for you, that he would bring it down upon you. Hear this, the Bible says in Mark, the word of the Lord says in Mark, glory to God, 11, go there quickly, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, he says, whatsoever you shall say unto the mountain." Woo, come on, I need about 10 people to help me preach that. Come on, Burley, I... That... Come on! Wait, what's going to happen? Uh-huh. In other words, don't have unbelief, don't operate in non-faith, but if you say it and know it in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, what's going to happen? They shall come to pass. They shall come to pass. He shall have whatever. Why 
why am I taking time with this? Because we, because because God is not happy. He looks at your unbelief as stench, as perversion, as unnatural, not operating in your natural habitat. You're not living in your natural habitat when you don't live in a sphere of faith. Oh, y'all, I know it was late, so you're quiet. But look at somebody say, when you don't believe God, you're not living in your natural estate. I'm a kingdom's citizen, having an earthly experience. And so understand this, when I do not live by faith, because the Bible says that the, the just shall live by faith. When I am not living by faith, when I am not operating in the supernatural, when I'm not calling mountains to move and be cast into the sea, I am not living where God wants me to live. I've left my natural habitat and I'm living beneath my privilege. Look at somebody and say, quit satisfying the need of the flesh. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't complain about what's going on in your life. Arm yourself with the word of God. Roll your sleeves up. Hold your head back and tell the devil where he got to go. Somebody shout, this is the day of the supernatural. Somebody shout, this is the day of the supernatural. That when I open my mouth, because we understand that the 80s, that, that this season, 2020 or 20,000 or whatever it is, the beginning of this decade, it was the mouth, the year of the open, the decade of the open mouth in the Hebrew, the Hebrew Bible. Again, that's where we get all of our originality. We, that's where we get our text. That's where we get our understanding. That's the knowledge that God provided for us. Someone say, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, is the knowledge that God gave me. The Gospels is the revelation of what he said I can have in the Old Testament. And the Epistles is the manifestation of everything that God said, I can live out and walk out. So I don't know about you, I'm gonna walk it out. The decade of the pay, the Hebrew Bible calendar, decade of the mouth, so whatever, anytime I open my mouth wide and declare, Apostle, why are you repeating this? Because I'm gonna repeat it until it gets into your head and to your spirit, and there will be no other way that every time you look at anything, anytime you see a doctor's report that you don't want, anytime you see a neighborhood alert you don't want, anytime you see anything that you don't want in your life, you can say, I'm gonna open my mouth and declare the will of God over this life. And my Bible tells me that whatever I say, if I have faith in my heart, Somebody needs to push some mountains out the way today. If you need to push a mountain out the way today, stand up and begin to push and push that mountain out of your life and say, I'm pushing you into the sea. Because the Bible says this is a season and a time for my supernatural release. Be seated. I'm just about done, but I feel the Holy Ghost saints. I gave you all that history because I want you to understand that God doesn't want you to operate like the unbeliever. We are not a hypocritical church. Just coming to church, sitting, rocking, looking good, looking pretty. No, we're coming here to be fired up and strengthened to have the power of God. Somebody shout, I need the power. So, someone, repeat after me, say that I am a distributor. Matter of fact, if you can write this down, who's up there? Write this down. 
amen, and put it on the screen. And someone help him if he needs help. I am a distributor of his solutions and his provisions. Come on, say it again. My purpose in life is to reflect his ability. Y'all ain't saying it like y'all believe it. I need to see. That's why we're going to have some people here in the same place. Amen. In five years, one year, because you're not believing and accepting the word of God. This is a message, amen, to move you to live in this supernatural realm. Look at somebody and shout, I'm going to go back to my natural place of, 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 of living. And that's in the realm of heaven by faith. So come on, says my purpose is to be a distributor. Come on, I need everyone to shout this. My purpose, that's it, is to be a distributor of his solutions and provisions. And it's already laid out in heaven. It's already there. All, I, all you got to do is pull it down. What are you saying, Apostle Hill? You're saying you don't want people to die. You don't want this. There. Listen, life will happen. Things come. Some of y'all last week wrestled with Pastor Luster when her message, when she was talking about faith and some things that we ain't got to accept. Look at, I'm, I'm backing what she had to say because we ain't got to live by, according to the world's measures. Things will happen. I didn't ask to have the things that I have in my body. This morning when I woke up, I couldn't walk in both of my ankles. I had gout. And I ain't on no medicine. You know what I did? I went in and told my prayer partner, Pastor Parr, and she didn't lay hands, she didn't point to me, she didn't do nothing to distract me, she just simply went down in her spirit and did what she did last week. Last week I couldn't pray, preach, because I had a physical situation going on. I had to call Pastor Luster at the last moment. I said, will you stand in for me? She said, yes, Apostle. And she did a fantastic job. But this week I said, the devil is a lie. I'm going to go in there, amen, and I'm going to fake it until I make it. Every step of ooh, ah, ooh. Y'all going to think I'm in the spirit. But look at somebody and say, this is the day that God wants the church to operate in demonstration of his power. Somebody show you got to demonstrate. I really am not lying. I'm trying to stop. But the word says the cookie keeps coming. Amen. Because Acts 4, the Bible says this, that they're at the gate called Beautiful. Peter and John went to the gate. And at the gate, they saw a man that was lame for, from birth for 40 years. For 40 years, he couldn't walk. 40 years, he lived by people giving him money. Glory to God. But what happened was that, but... He came and he saw the apostles coming and they said, he said, put his hand off for money and they said, silver and gold have I not. but I ain't got what you want but I got what you need and such what I have, Mother Moore, I'm going to release it and I'm going to give it to you. They spoke the word. The man got up, picked up his bed. The apostles went into the church. They preached, and 5,000 men were saved in one setting. Why? Because of a demonstration. We're talking about a fallen society. Violence, crime, 
poverty and all these things taking place. All we got to do, functions, is do what? Release demonstration power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, go to Jerusalem. Wait there. Because you're going to be endowed with and when power has come upon you, you shall be what? Witnesses unto myself and to the uttermost parts of the world. What did he say here? He says, once the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will have the ability, you will have the power to, to be able to be the solution and the providers for everybody that needs it. Look at somebody and say, I am. The solution that heaven sent for such a time as this. Look at somebody and say, I'm about to release my power. And whoever is in my way that believe God with me, I release the authority and power of the Holy Ghost. I need everybody that need a miracle. You need a demonstration. We're going we're gonna to practice what we preach. If you need a miracle, jump to your feet real quick. Glory to God. Now those of you, so now I want you to understand that the word of God is already inside you. No one has to lay hands on you. No one has to pray for you. We can pray with you. But the ability is already on you. It's already in you. And if you want that miracle today, I want you to begin for the next 30 seconds to reach up. And I want you to praise God like you got it. Because I'm telling you, once you do that, it's been released into your spirit because of your obedience. And the Holy Spirit, the angels from on high, are delivering the messages to you. Come on, lift those hands. Begin to praise God. Praise them like you want it. Praise them like you need it. Praise them like you want it. Praise them like you need it. Praise him. Go for it. Go after it. Get it. Again. 
against him shall prosper. Glory to God. He is a distributor that is fulfilling the purpose of God. So it's now you have prayed for him. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I will obey the word of the Lord. And I will be what he has called me to be this week. <laughs> we don't know if we'll be here next month, but this week I'm here today. So God, as we leave this place, but not your presence, thank you for already going before us and making the quicker place of straight. Thank you for building our faith by the word we heard today. We will take that word and we will be doers of the word we heard today. Not just here, say, I'm going to be a doer. I'm just not going to be here. I'm going to do the word this week. In Jesus' name, we love you. Be blessed and go in the strength of the Lord.